Well, Mark Wahlberg, set in Boston. There you go. I'm in. I'm buying a ticket to this movie immediately. Those are two selling points that immediately will get me in to see the movie. That's it. Boom. End of review. Anyway, hey there guys, what's up, what's going on? It is Autobot Mike 18 here, back with another movie review. Guys, the year is nearly over. It's December 27th, today, the day I've seen these uh, movies that I'm reviewing. And I do not have a lot of time, guys. I, um, the end of the year is slowly approaching. My top 10 list is due. I have to get it out to you guys before I get crazy busy and before I have a lot of work to do. And you get the idea. Um, but uh, what I've managed to do, guys, I am proud to say that I went into New York City live pretty close to it. I managed to see two films that are in very, very limited release, and I'm going to be reviewing both of them to you guys. These are my last two movie reviews of the year, so I hope you guys enjoy them. That said, guys, I did a double feature today. I did the same thing last year when I saw The Hateful Eight and The Revenant. This year, today, I went and saw a double feature screening of Patriot's Day, which I'm going to be reviewing in this video. And then after I saw Patriot's Day, I went and checked out Martin Scorsese's newest film, Silence. So check out my review for Silence. It'll be up after I get this one up. But uh, let's talk about Patriot's Day in this video, guys. Um, but yes, I am really glad I got a chance to check this one out. As I said, currently it's only playing in very, very limited release right now, only in New York and L.A. And by New York, I mean in two movie theaters in New York City, and that's the only two places that you can see the movie in New York. So I went there, and I went to the earliest showing in this movie, nearly dead theater, because it was like 9.30 in the morning, and I'm really happy I finally got to see Patriot's Day because I was really, really anticipating this one. This was seriously, I uh, this always happens at the end of every year, guys. I always want to make my top 10, but I have to put it off because there's two or three movies that get limited releases that I have to see so I can put my list together because they may or may not be on the list. Who knows? Patriot's Day might be on that list. Let's just put it at that. So, guys. Patriot's Day, let's get into the premise and everything and talk about other things uh, that I felt about this movie, of course, because it's a review. Um, so Patriot's Day is a essentially an account or a biopic of the 2013 Boston Marathon bombing. Now, if you guys don't haven't heard of this event, were you living under a rock in 2013? Maybe. Um, no, jokes aside, this was an incredibly devastating event in history, in recent, like modern history. In uh, uh, 2013, two bombers set off a bunch, uh, set off a grouping of explosives during the Boston Marathon, uh, severely wounding uh, a lot of people, a lot of participants at the marathon, a lot of uh, uh, passerby, people who were just watching the race. Um, and the film follows a group of uh, police officers, uh, law enforcement officials, um, FBI agents, uh, and just regular average everyday citizens as they deal with the events of this horrific uh, experience throughout a whole week-long process because not only do you have the events of the Boston Marathon bombing, you have the explosions going off, people getting wounded, all this hectic, crazy chaos going on in the streets of Boston. But you have two bombers who are now escaped, so the city of Boston is going to go on lockdown, guys, so they can find these two guys. And that, my friends, is Patriot's Day. Now, the film, guys, stars Mark Wahlberg in the lead role as a police officer um, in... Uh, Boston. He was on site during the events of the marathon bombing. Um, and the film is directed by Peter Berg, guys. So real quick, just to sort of segue from the premise into just backstory and building this movie up, Patriot's Day is the third collaboration between Mark Wahlberg and Peter Berg. They've had three, they've done three films together now. Their first being 2013's Lone Survivor. Uh, which was very good, and this year's Deep Water Horizon. And now they had their second film this year to come out just before the year ended. They literally just snuck it in there. And, yeah, their third collaboration. So I was definitely excited for this one, guys. I think there was definitely some skepticism going around when people saw the trailers. Everybody was like, 
do we really need a Boston Marathon bombing movie already? It hasn't even been it hasn't even been four years yet. So a lot of people were like, we don't need this. It's way too soon for this movie yet. Hollywood just wants money. You know, we don't need this movie. A lot of people had that feeling. I understand why people feel that way, but I was still nevertheless excited. And I was like, okay, I'm still going to go see it no matter what. Sorry. <laughs> um, and I, I personally, I have a personal attachment to this event and this story of the Boston Marathon bombing. Just briefly getting into this, I don't want to detract from what I felt about the movie and everything. I want to get into that, of course. But um, back in 2013, about four months after the actual bombing, in August, I actually made my own short film based on the events of the lockdown and the manhunt uh, that uh, took place in Watertown, Massachusetts um, on uh, April 19th. Uh, a few days after the bombing, uh, the hunt for the uh, the Zarnov brothers um, that happened, and I based the short film off of it about a pass uh, about a, a, an average citizen locked in his house, and it was awful. It was a pile of crap. But I did a lot of research for that movie. In case any of you were wondering, no, it's not online. I'm not releasing it in the public. I hate it. It was before I made that movie. Before I learned how to make movies at film school, <laughs> it was right before I went to film school. So. Um, yeah, I'm not proud of that movie, but um, when I heard they were making this movie, I was like, this is the movie I probably wanted to make, but just totally couldn't because I didn't have the budget, the cast, or anything that Peter Berg had to make this movie. Let's just put it that. So for that reason as well, I had a personal like connection to, I was like, yes, I want to go see this movie. I really respect the, I respected the story because I wanted to make it into my own thing as well. That said, guys, wow. Patriot's Day is incredible, guys. This movie blew me away from beginning to end. This is a highly rousing, gripping, and riveting thriller from start to finish. But it's not your straightforward, typical action thriller. We're going to break out in a gunfight. This is factual. This is a biopic. This is focusing on exactly what happened in that treacherous week that everybody uh, experienced in Boston. I can't imagine what police officers were going through, what family members were going through, not only family members of the bombing, but just citizen people living in Boston, anyone living in Boston during the time. I can't imagine what you must have been going through at that time. I really, I really can't. I would have probably been a nervous wreck during that entire week. Where are these bombers? What the hell's going on? What are they gonna hit next? What is the FBI, what is the government doing about this? What's really going on at the core of everything? And I, I have to say, the way Peter Berg handled it, the way the screenwriters handled the source material is not only incredibly respectful, but yes, of course, it's done in an entertaining way, which is very important, but the fact that nothing is just like glossed over and made over the top and ridiculous you know, for the sake of making this big per Hollywood production. Nothing about this movie really felt Hollywood to me. It never felt over the top or ridiculous or or um, disrespectful to the men and women that not only gave their service to discovering what was really going on, but just to everyone who was affected by this event. And I think that Berg and the filmmakers did a phenomenal job in that regard. Um, I really, really do. And I have to highly praise them for their work um, regarding this film. Guys, uh, something that Patriot made Patriot's Day work so well for me and made me instantly click with the characters because that's definitely a big important thing definitely pertaining to the screenplay and how the film's cut together and how it was shot and everything. But something that just makes Patriot's Day, it elevates Patriot's Day from being a high-octane thriller that it is in several scenes that it is, without a doubt, despite the fact that I already know what's happened. I know every single thing about this event. I know uh, who got killed, who didn't, who made it out alive, what exactly happened on certain days of this week. But it was still highly gripping and engaging for me from beginning to end. I'll get more into that. But the one thing that elevated this movie for me and separated it from being just a typical Hollywood movie, whatever, you know, just cliche garbage that we're used to, 
was characters. I really feel that this film, like Deepwater Horizon did in Peter Berg's other, other movie with Mark Wahlberg, I feel that both movies, specifically Patriot's Day, does a very good job in its first 25, 15, 20 minutes of setting up these characters and making them feel like actual people. I love how the screenplay gives these characters little human traits that make them feel very real to me. For example, J.K. Simmons is in this movie. He plays a police sergeant, I believe, in Watertown, and he's a guy who normally gets breakfast for his wife every single morning. He goes to the Dunkin' Donuts. He has a certain cigarette, and there's a there's a really nice shot where he goes to this Dunkin' Donuts, he takes the cigarette out of his mouth, literally puts it in the wedge of like a cement brick outside the Dunkin' Donuts, goes inside, has a nice conversation with the cashier, goes back outside after he's gotten breakfast, takes the cigarette back and goes back to his car. It's little moments like that, little things like that, that make these people feel like actual people. There is another young couple in this movie, just a pair of ordinary citizens who were in the wrong place at the wrong time at the time when the bombs went off in this film, or at the time when the bombs went off. Um, and there's a really lovely scene where I really felt latched onto these two characters and I bought them as a husband and wife character in this movie where they're just sitting at a dinner table talking about how to pronounce Red Sox. I loved it. It's little, little things like that that really made me connect and relate to these characters and made me see them as people. There's a father and a son relationship in this movie with a young boy. Mark Wahlberg's character has a lot going on at home with Michelle. He's married to Michelle Monaghan's character. They have, there's a really nice scene between him when he's coming. I'm really sad, these aren't really spoilers. These are just like scenes that happen in the, literally the first 10 minutes of the movie. But Wahlberg comes home late uh, at night, maybe, you know, he doesn't want to wake up his wife. It's just little things like that. That, that I think really cemented this these characters to me and made that made me feel made me feel like they were real people and I have I got that feeling throughout that first half and that's why I care about all these characters when the shit hits the fan in towards the end of the film and when the shit hits the fan in this movie guys my word does the shit hit the fan the action thriller sequences, the Boston bombing sequence, as well as a giant shootout that happens in the streets of Boston. These are two of the best scenes of the year, guys. I'm not even joking with you. They are incredibly directed, gorgeously shot. I love the handheld shaky feel that this movie has throughout all of these major scenes. I was entirely riveted and the tension was all that more palpable because of how these sequences were shot. The, the choreography and everything, the cinematography is great. The lighting of the night sequences in the shootout scene looks amazing. But what also really blew me away was the sound design. The sound design is amazing. If this movie's going to get any Oscar recognition or anything, I could totally see it getting sound editing and sound mixing love because it's really, really good. The score is also really good as well. Um, but guys, easily, one of the best scenes of this year had me on the edge of my seat. I knew exactly what was going to happen. But I even started like forgetting like little details like, oh, that happened to that character. Wow, I totally forgot about that. Little, little things I actually started, I didn't remember. And I was like, wow, oh, I forgot that's what happened to that character. Damn, they actually did that. And they, yeah, they did a very faithful adaptation of it, of course, based from what I know and what I've researched. Um, but the, the, the shootout sequence, I'm just going to say that much. That, just that. The shootout sequence, guys, is one of the best scenes of the year. Best scenes of the year. Easy, easy contender for one of the best scenes of the year. It's so good. Edge of the seat thrills. Your movie ticket admission price is literally worth just that scene alone. Just that scene alone. Marathon bombing sequence, easily as, as uh, palpable in terms of tension and thrills as that scene is. Um, I was on edge. I was totally on edge and I love how it cuts from actual footage of them filming a movie with these actors as well with the actual footage, security camera footage of the brothers walking through the crowd and, play, you know, seeing bystanders or seeing people running the race, running the marathon. Um, it's just, it's really, really well done. And again, I'm going to keep going back to, it's also very damn respectful. Another thing I haven't talked about and I know I'm running late, acting.
The acting in this movie is fantastic, guys. The performances are all really good. Mark Wahlberg gives a career best for him. It's definitely one of his best performed. Probably one of my favorite performances from him since The Departed because, yeah, he played a Boston cop in both movies and he's something he does really freaking well. He was also very good in Deepwater Horizon. Very good year for him. He's amazing in this movie. He broke in one scene and damn it hit me. Uh, but the rest of the cast is amazing as well. John Goodman, Kevin Bacon, A-list cast in this movie, J.K. Simmons, Michelle Monaghan, Melissa Benoist, uh, Alex Wolfe. The actors playing the brothers were amazing. And I also really enjoyed all the performances from the actors playing like the civilians. They're unknown actors or else I would have named them. I didn't look them up beforehand. Sorry. But they are all very, very good and very, give very viable, very buying and convincing performances. Guys, that said, Patriot's Day really blew me away. This is an incredible thriller that does an incredible job of paying respect to everybody that was affected by these events, everybody whose life who has changed. And if the final 10 minutes of this movie doesn't get you choked up inside a little bit and doesn't hit you as hard as it hit me, then you probably don't have a soul. That's all I'm going to say. But I love the final 10 minutes of this movie. You can say that it breaks from the narrative and it's not, it's something different, but it's paying tribute to what actually happened and who actually went through this horrific event. And for that reason, I really got to praise this movie. I love what this film tries to say about love and community. It's very strong. The screenplay, the direction from Peter Berg. This is definitely my favorite Peter Berg film. Collaboration with Wahlberg, for sure. It's really, really strong, guys, in every sense of the word. Acting, camera work, um, everything is great. Sound, everything is perfect with Patriots Day, guys. I had a blast with this movie. It's definitely a tough watch, but it's definitely a film that's worth checking out, guys, without a doubt. Um, if I had to complain about anything, I'll just say this much. Wahlberg's character, as much as I loved him, you could tell that they were trying to just have his character be involved in every single scene, even though I was like, okay, this is happening in a different town, but it's Wahlberg. You gotta keep him in the movie. Now, I don't, he, I don't think his character was based on any, uh, non, uh, on any actual person, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't think so. So I think his character is fictional. And if it is, if his character is, then it was just like, we got to have Mark Wahlberg in every scene. Let's put him in every scene. That said, that's, I was fine with that because Wahlberg is a beast, but that's just one thing I was like, okay, they just got to have Wahlberg in every scene. That said, guys, I love Patriot's Day. This is one of the best movies of the year. For sure, it's going to be on my top 10 list, and it's my favorite Peter Berg and Mark Wahlberg collaboration by far to date. Guys, in the end, I'm going to give Patriot's Day a solid grade of a 9.5 out of 10 or an A. This is definitely a film worth checking out, guys. When it gets a wide release, please do yourself a favor and go see this movie. It's so worth it. Guys, if you have seen Patriot's Day, and you want in New York and LA, let me know what you thought of it down below in the comments. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll check you guys later. Bye.